Hello everyone. In our ECMO class today, we will discuss about the ventilatory settings in a patient who is put on ECMO. So as you have seen, patient is on the ECMO. At the same time, the lung is connected to the ventilator. So what should be the ventilator settings? Let us discuss. So we have put the patient on ventilator. That means now we can provide ultra low lung protective ventilation right so how to provide it there are different studies so we have one conclusion so we have to give the patient a total volume of 3 to 6 ml per kg body weight the lower the better second we have to target a P plat of less than 25. Third, we have to use a PEEP. The exact value is unknown, but we have to use a moderate PEEP around, let's say, 8 to 10 centimeter of water. We have to have a modest oxygenation goal or SPO2 goal, SPO2 target 88 to 92 percent number five modest co2 removal goal so you can tolerate a little bit of a cirrhosis for example around 7.25 to 7.35 right so these are the settings that you have to put in our patient who is put an ECMO initially right this is called ultra lung protective ventilation and why you are doing this because you are giving the lungs time for improvement for recovery so this is doing two things number one it is giving the lung time to recover at the same time it is decreasing the life which is barotrauma because you are avoiding a high area pressure decreasing volume trauma because it is decreasing because we are able to give a very low tidal volume of patient atelic trauma because you are using a PEEP so it will prevent atelic trauma because you are using a modest oxygen goal this will prevent ventilator induced oxygen toxicity because we are targeting a P plot of less than 25, it can also decrease the driving pressure and that will improve the motility, right? So we are able to achieve these two things. Now when to consider winning? So the next target is our when to consider winning right so there will be a situation when the lung will start improving so the lung starts improving what do you mean by that that means on similar ventilator settings lung mechanic improves so we have put the patient on ventilator with the setting and the next day you come and you see what do you see if the patient is on VCV and you see the P plat is actually decreasing on same ventilator setting that means the lungs compliance is actually improving and if the patient is on PCV we have put on pressure control ventilation and you see the tidal volume is increasing on same pressure control that is also means that also means uh, the lungs compliance also increasing and thirdly the ABG is better is actually improving there is no oxygenation problem there is no ventilation problem or they're actually better than before so these are the things that you have to assess in your patient on daily basis to consider winning from ECMO and how it exactly done so the winning, so in the beginning, 
So this is the ECMO, this is the ventilator. So in the beginning ECMO support is maximum and ventilator support is minimum. Right. As the native lung improves, so the native lung, so the native lung starts improving. So here, here what you can do is you can come down on ECMO how by decreasing the sweep gas flow but keeping ECMO blood flow and anticoagulation intact so keeping ECMO blood flow and anticoagulation intact we can decrease the sweep gas flow and at the same time we can increase the ventilator support So when the native lung improved significantly, that is your clinical decision. Every day you are seeing the patient, the complexes improved significantly. It is at that time what you can do is, we, you can even decrease the sweep gas to zero. No sweep gas flow, right? It can be for few hours or overnight. If oxygenation is okay, you can decrease the uh, ECMO blood flow even decrease ECMO blood to around 2 liter per minute because now lung has overtaken so you have to increase the blood flowing through the lungs so decrease the ECMO blood flow to 2 liter per minute and in the ventilator part now we can sustain a lung protective ventilation without causing any injury to the lung at the same time we can maintain homeostasis using lung protective ventilation that means by using tidal volume less than 6 ml per kg of ideal body weight by using a peep of less than 12 FiO2 of less than 0.6 we can have a peep plant of less than or equal to 25 and we have we can have an AVG which is sustainable with life using this ventilator setting. So if it if patient passes this test, tolerate sweep gas flow zero with minimal of ECMO blood flow and a lung protective ventilation enough to keep a P plat of less than 25 and a ABG that a, that can sustain life. That means there is no problem in the oxygenation, there is no problem in the ventilation. If this happens, decanulation can be tried. Right. So this is how you plan to win from ECMO. Usually, in most of the cases, it takes around 8 to 10 days of ECMO. And it is at that time, uh, we can start winning or consider winning. If patient improves before also we can do that but on an average majority of cases it takes around 8 to 10 days of ECMO for the lung to recover right but in the first 12 to 14 hours or oh sorry first 12 to 24 hours try to get a read of neuromuscular blocker or pulmonary vasodilator if you are using we must be able to stop it by 12 to 24 hours of starting ECMO. If you want to do a tracheostomy in your patient, do it while the patient is on ECMO. This will do it while on ECMO. This will prevent sedative use after decannulation and it can mobilize the patient. We can mobilize the patient fairly quickly. Right. So this is how we set the ventilator in our ECMO patient in the beginning, how it benefits our patient, when to consider winning and how to win we have discussed today. Right. So in the next class we will discuss about the troubleshootings. Thank you very much.